I had a client about a year and a half ago that hit a plateau for about six weeks and we were really stumped. And then we removed nightshades and lectins out of the equation and they had a big shift. They were able to break through the plateau. Now, I'm not saying that everyone needs to remove lectins. Not at all, okay? I'm not trying to demonize anything. But what I want to do is educate people on how lectins could impede weight loss based upon some research and how it might be something to experiment with just to see how you feel. Hey, do hit that red subscribe button, then hit that little bell icon, and then after this video, I want you to check out my friends over at Thrive Market. If you've been a subscriber to my channel for a while, you know I talk about them, and I live and breathe Thrive Market because they make my life easy. They're an online membership-based grocery store, so check them out. They make it so that you can get whatever kind of foods you want for whatever dietary pattern you're doing, keto, fasting, paleo, whatever, and it gets delivered to your doorstep in like one to three days. It's so easy and convenient. It makes it so I don't have to go to the grocery store. I end up saving time and money that way. They're also just a big supporter of this channel. And if you're a fan of this channel, it really helps to support the brands that support us. Make sure you check them out down below in the description. There's a special link for subscribers of my channel. What is a lectin? A lectin is a poison that is in specific vegetables, okay? Now, a lot of times you'll find them in beans and things like that, but the reality is once you cook beans and things like that, the lectins are pretty low, okay? So I know that argument is out there with a lot of different people and gurus online, but unless you're eating cold beans and hard beans, you're probably not running into a lectin issue there. But where we do run into a little bit of a lectin issue is with tomatoes, with bell peppers, with chili powder, which is pretty rich in lectins, okay? So we have to be careful with that kind of stuff. Now, the reason it's a poison is it's a poison that's designed to poison insects, to keep insects from eating them, okay? We're not really supposed to be eating copious, copious amounts of it because yes, we would be ingesting this toxin. Well, there are some interesting studies, like one that was published in journal Phytochemistry that found that when insects consumed lectins, they had massive disruption of their midgut. Okay, that is basically like equating to humans having an issue with their small intestine after consuming lectins. Okay, so let's break down how it might affect you with weight loss though, because this is what's intriguing. There is a study that was published in the journal BMC Endocrine Disorders that found that lectins consumed from tomatoes, bell peppers, things like that, actually would bind to something called leptin receptors. Not to be confused with lectin, leptin, L-E-P, with a, like Paul. We always call that the cheat meal hormone because leptin, we want to be relatively high, okay? We want it to be high because what that does is it signals to the brain that we have plenty of fat on hand and it's okay for the brain to rev up metabolism. So when the fat cells call the brain, they're basically using leptin. Fat cells call the brain, say, hey, there's plenty of fat here on this body, you're good to go to crank up the heat and turn up the metabolism. If leptin levels are low, then it communicates with the brain and the brain says, uh-oh, we might be low on fat. We should probably slow down the metabolism so this person doesn't waste away. Well, what happens is in an overweight person, we have so much leptin, so much fat that is communicating with the brain that eventually the brain hangs up the phone and says, I'm tired of you calling me. Okay, clearly it's a false alarm. You're clearly crying wolf here because it's constantly hitting me. Well, what happens with lectins from you know, the tomatoes and things like that, they can bind to those leptin receptors. And when they bind to those leptin receptors, they cause leptin resistance. So they basically will trigger the brain into slowing down that whole leptin response, which can trigger a weight loss plateau. It's pretty significant. Again, I've seen it happen with people, but one person in particular, it was very clear as day. As soon as the lectins were removed, without even changing calories, weight loss resumed, okay? Now, let's break it down a little bit more. In this same BMC study, it demonstrated that pigs that didn't have lectins in their diet had an improvement in insulin sensitivity, which probably has to do with the leptin and stuff like that. So that's really wild. But they also noticed that pigs that had the lectins from the tomatoes, the bell peppers, things like that, they had a modest increase in inflammatory markers, modest increase in inflammation. Why did this occur? Is it because it's a highly reactive food? No, I think it's arguably because it disrupts the gut. And when you disrupt the gut, you leave the potential for what are called lipopolysaccharides to leach into the bloodstream. Lipopolysaccharides are components that are perfectly fine when they're within our gut, but when they leak into our bloodstream, they can trigger all kinds of inflammatory responses, which we don't really want. So if we're disrupting the gut, these suckers can leak in. And that's likely what's happening because when the lectins are removed, inflammatory signaling kind of went back down. 
Now, I am a central nervous system nerd, and I need to touch on this because this is so important. There was a study published in the journal NPJ Parkinson's, okay, and it found that there was a correlation between lectins being a poison and communicating via the vagus nerve to the brain. So they found that in mouse models, these mice would have like motor issues, like central nervous system issues when they would have lectins. And they found that it would travel up the vagus nerve to the brain, triggering them to not respond as well. That's scary stuff. And that's exactly what poisons do. They usually affect our central nervous system, right? You look at like a snake bite, that's kind of how it affects. So you have neural, neural toxins or hemotoxins, right? Now, in this particular case, in these mouse models, when they removed the vagus nerve, they did not have that issue. They could give them lectins all day long and it didn't affect their brain. Now, the big piece of the equation here is, like I mentioned earlier, if you cook lectins, if you cook these tomatoes, if you, really a lot of the lectin issue is abolished. So it's not like you have to avoid these foods and demonize them and like put them up on your wall, like make a voodoo doll out of a tomato. It's not gonna do you any good to just live life in fear. Have them now and then. But one thing that I would suggest is doing your best to cook them. Like tomato sauces and stuff like that, you're usually fine because they're so cooked and so adulterated that you're getting rid of the lectins. But that being said, there's still some. And if you're a highly sensitive person, you gotta be careful. Now, the British Journal of Nutrition took a look at highly sensitive people, and they found, yes, indeed, there is a relationship between like people with rheumatoid arthritis and potential autoimmune issues that respond negatively to nightshades, even small amounts of like chili powder. So it is a thing, but you don't know. You always don't know what's underlying. So it's all about self-experimentation. You might find that if you remove nightshades, eggplant, chili powder, tomatoes, things like that, bell pepper, suddenly you feel really good. Oh, that could be an indicator that maybe you've been living with something underlying that you didn't know about and this helped solve the issue. So I'm not saying demonize, I'm saying educate and try and experiment because there is something there. There is some correlation, but we're only scratching the surface of the tomato. I'll see you tomorrow.